It is a dark day in Transylvania. But it's not a dark day here where I am because I get to finally do this game as a Let's Play. And I have been looking forward to this one for a long, long time. Yes, this is my fourth chapter in my Castlevania saga of Let's Plays, Super Castlevania 4. My favorite Castlevania game of all time. And just look at that. Amazing. So, let's watch the intro here. I mean, look at that graphic. Those graphics, I mean, for 16-bit, that looks very realistic. I mean, it's got to be one of the greatest intros to any old-school game ever. So, yeah, this game is just greatness all around, and I'm going to have so much fun doing this one. Oh, man. Oh, that. I guess we know what that means. Maybe that's the grave from Simon's Quest. How eerie. This, this is just an awesome introduction. You know, except for the mis... Uh, for the redundant translation, but that's not, that's not the main point. I mean, look at this, the fog rolls in, covering the screen, slow scrolling, so atmospheric, it's amazing. I'm not even going to bother to read this, because you can read it for yourself, and it's not that important. The main thing is that it's time to fight Dracula once more, and Simon Belmont has been called upon to fight him. You can see the fog, or the clouds, just keep rolling in until they're covering the whole screen, and just so atmospheric, so amazing, and it's just great. This is an amazing game, and one of the best SNES games that there is. Oh my, I just can't get over how great this is going to be and how much fun I'm going to have with this. Oh yes, Castlevania 4. Super Castlevania 4. So once again, Simon Belmont must destroy Dracula. With only his whip and his courage. Sorry, I just, I don't know. This is just so amazing. I, this is going to be great. I mean, I'm really looking forward to this. As you can see, the fog just creeping on in so eerie. Perfectly sets the mood for this game. This game can get pretty creepy and ambient as it goes on. So anyway, there's the intro. Wow. And we're going to skip the preview. So here we go. Super Castlevania 4, 1992, Konami. The Wolf Howls. Oh, yes. I'm going to put in my initials again. Wolf Howls. As you start up the game, that's just great. I actually was once playing this, and I my brother heard that, and he was like, what the hell was that? He got really freaked out by it. I thought there was like a real wolf howling. So as you can see, this looks amazing. And look at that attention to detail. I never noticed that skull in the background. And if you look carefully, there are bats flying out of there. It's really cool. So anyway, here we got similar design to most of the f earlier Castlevanias in the first screen here. Uh, there is some different stuff going on in this game in terms of the control, which I'm going to just show off now. Now you can whip in eight directions. Uh, my keyboard is not good enough to go diagonally, though. I guess the keys are just not as sensitive. Using your special weapon, you press the R button instead of up in the attack button. Climbing stairs is more smooth and easy. You can even moonwalk upstairs, which is kind of cool. You can drop off the stairs, you can land on the stairs. So the control in this game is just infinitely better than the first three Castlevania games. It's really good. Here we got this whole bit, nice water effect down there. And now, this is where the real stuff starts up. The music is great. Oh yes. So I'm still a candle perfectionist like I was in the first game, so I'm going to be collecting a lot of candles here. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So yeah, here we go. It's great music, really gets you going, you know, kind of 
adventurous type music. It's really great. Yeah, my brother once watched me play this a little bit. And uh, it was because I was first playing the original Castlevania and he started watching. He was like, he's kind of a he kind of prefers to have good graphics on games. I don't know, it's not a real rhetoric I agree with him on, but it's what he's like. And he was like, oh, how can you stand these graphics? I can't even watch this anymore. So I was like, alright, I'll play something with better graphics for you. Start playing this game. And he actually liked the graphics on this one. I mean, how can you not? They're really good. So yeah, he was watching me play that. It was kind of fun. I kind of wish he'd watch me play more old games. For two reasons, two main reasons. One is that I used to watch him play games on, you know, on our, like, our N64 or the GameCube or, you know, on the consoles and stuff, and I would love to watch him, and that's probably one of the reasons why I'm so, um, why I like Let's Play so much, because it's the same idea. We'd talk and, you know, just talk over the game and watch the game at the same time. It was really fun. I mean, this was before I had mustered up the courage to play video games by myself. So, it was really fun doing that. And also because I wish he just, if he watched them more and actually played older games, I think he would get a better appreciation for them because he doesn't really care for old games now, even though he's like played two or not even. But he really doesn't care for old games, which, I mean, his argument is that they were good for the time and same way like movies, they're kind of just seen as good for the time, and that way they're classics, and it's more for nostalgia than for actual value of game play, but I think he's really just, he doesn't really know what he's talking about, because the gameplay on these games, some of them are just great, and I mean, he just, and like, you know, they have good difficulty, and, you know, creativity, and he says that's just because the games lack of any depth that they need to be more difficult and stuff. But I just feel like, okay, you don't really know what you're talking about, because, I mean, play Chrono Trigger or something, that's, that has depth to it, alright, I mean, and also you have to take into account that it's the 80s and 90s early video gaming, I mean, you can't have the depth that PC games do, you can still have a fun, good game, because he just doesn't want to admit that, whatever, but it'd be great if you could watch that. I know some people in my school would be really pissed off seeing me kill horses like this. <laughs> Got some horse lovers in my school. Uh, horses are alright. They're nice enough animals, but personally, I like wolves. Yeah. I like wolves. It's my favorite animal, probably. They're so misunderstood, and they're very clever. They're also just nice looking. I mean, the way they run and stuff. There's a dagger in there. You don't want that. So yeah, second to wolves probably have to be cats. I love cats more than dogs, but I like dogs too. So I guess I should start talking more about the game and less about, you know, animals and stuff, but I thought it was good to bring something up other than what I'm doing, because I mean, this is a platformer. Uh, this whole jump whip attack thing, it's not really the most interesting point of conversation. So I, got to, I have to bring something new up. Alright, so here's the first boss, his cakewalk. Actually, most of this game is quite a lot easier than most Castlevania games. Yeah, but it still retains a fair amount of challenge, which just shows you how hard the earlier ones were, because this is quite a lot easier than them. Oh, nice position. But at the same time, it still retains quite a good amount of challenge, so... Just goes to show, the earlier ones were tough as nails. Anyway... Got a little faster scrolling thing here. I think I went through that level without taking a hit. Nice. So this is stage two. They got a nice map thing here, which is really cool. I want to draw this map. That would be awesome. It's a really cool map, I mean. And that bat indicates a boss. So you can see the boss is at the center of the level, rather than at the end. I still got a little bit of time because of the extended time limit, so I might just get to that boss and then stop the video there. Might have to do some editing though, I don't know. Which Cam Studio would tell me my time in minutes rather than seconds. I don't like these hands. They grab you, it's annoying. Just like, they don't even hurt you, they just sit or just uh, tie you down for a few seconds. 
I don't like him. Okay, that was close. Release spiders like in Castle. Oh no, I want that. Like in. No! Hey, oh, you bastard. Like in Castlevania 3, there are the spiders. This music is nice, kind of reminds me of like if you were to be playing this game on a, on a rainy day. You're just sitting inside and it's kind of warm and light, and outside it's all rainy and dark. And then you're playing this game, that's what this music kind of reminds me of. Seems like something that you would like to hear on a rainy day as you're playing this game. Castlevania Symphony of the Night, to me, from what I've seen, not that I've played it, but from what I've seen, looks like a game that you'd really be playing on a rainy day. The whole inside the castle feeling and stuff, for some reason, just makes me think of being inside on a rainy, dark day. I don't know. It's how video games... It just shows that the atmosphere of this game is very well done. Okay, you want to be careful for that little armadillo thing. I get hit by that guy way too many times. And now that you see this background back here with these mountains and the dark clouds and stuff, you even think of the rain even more. Uh, here are the birds. Yeah, Castlevania birds. Annoying, but not too bad. You know, this game is so, uh, the gameplay is so good that you usually don't, you kind of, um, lose your sense for the backgrounds, but the backgrounds are really good. Oh, I almost never fall in there. I don't know what that was all about. The backgrounds are really nice if you take a moment to look at them. Everything is just so atmospheric. I've said that a million times, but it's true. So, yeah, this... The first five levels, which are outside of the castle, are not that hard. The possible exception of some parts of level four, but really the whole game is not that hard. But uh, I'm going to be doing the same thing I did with Castlevania 3 in that I'm going to use safe states only in um, after the first five levels. So basically that means when I'm in the castle, that's when I'll be allowed to use safe states. So yeah, here you get even more of a rainy feeling with all those dark clouds billowing overhead and you got this music playing. It's really nice. Yeah, in this game, another thing that's a little different is that there are two kinds of healing items. There's your regular pork chop that you find in a wall, and there's also like a chicken leg or something, which you find in uh, candles, it heals a little less health, but it's still pretty good, and this game's quite generous, the programmers got really nice with this one, so there's Medusa, I don't know how they didn't censor that, but anyway, really easy, just duck and smash her, so that's half the level, I think I'm actually going to end this video here, so uh, thank you all for watching.